My name is Atem. I was born in Sudan and actually from South Sudan. South Sudan is a country that found in 2011. So it just came out from Sudan. So in my identity is saying Sudanese, but I'm South Sudanese. I came to US in 2001 as a refugee from uh, South Sudan, but I came from Kenya to US in 2001. I work for uh, Department of Workforce Services, uh, Refugee Services Office as a community program supervisor. So today I will do some of artwork showing some of my culture because that's what we always cheer. Like where of these days we used to dance and show our cultures to many people. So the other thing important when I'm doing my artwork is color. So colors are very important in, in my work. Um, I speak through colors and you can see from the other painting that I, I have. Um, each color that I use means something, um, either in my life or in refugee's world. Red color, it means danger or the struggling for the people. Um, green color is mean uh, peace and the hope people have is yellow. When people have hope, like things may change and we will have a better thing uh, in life. So most of the color means something to, to me and that's how I use colors. So today, I'm going to do a landscape uh, from my memory of my village. Uh, my village is called Wer Nyon. So I will do one as a landscape and one will be with houses, um, the house I was born in, in the village. But the first one will be a landscape uh, with tree and now um, our people were born they have a very talent came with them mostly doing decoration like if you go to the houses um, you can see a lot of decoration and this is a nature that's what people used to do so all the few people would do painting um, back home there were no alas uh, after people came to the refugees came, I think we start having a, a good number of people start doing painting. But if you if you go back before the war, you can see the hut, those small houses, and you can see a very beautiful decoration either outside or inside, and that's what people do. They use charcoal, they use uh, hatches, they use many other things to, and then they mix it with water and then like doing wall paint, uh, yeah, so. And then the, the paint with different colors, yeah. Um, this is where we take our cow for grass. So it's just like a porous where the cow go and eat grass. Um, I suppose to have the layers like a primer first, like a background but I'm not going to do that. So I will add more on this, but this is like a background for the green one first. And then, yeah, it's just like a start, but I feel really great or good when I make artwork. It's like creating something, you know, um, when you, do a painting that people can see and say, wow. So it's, that's always amazing me. And you know, you feel good when you create something. You created your, using your time, your ideas, um, whatever you come from your mind and do it. And you should be, feel proud of it. And that's how I look at it, yeah. So my artwork began when I was 14 years old. That was back in 1994 when I was in the refugee camp. It was a long history, um, something related to my personal life and also something related to um, the conflict, the 
um, the conflict that led South Sudan to be a you know, independent country from Sudan. So when I was in the refugees camp, there was a lot of murmuring, bad murmuring, and was traumatized by what happened um, during my struggle when I left the country, uh, lost my parent and my relative and all these things. So it was not easy for me to um, to get rid of them, uh, all this memory in my mind. So, so it was like a dream back in two, I mean in 1994, um, one night I just had a dream and just why I don't share this thing with other people. So the main thing being in the refugees camp, um, you your hope always is like completing, um, you know, elementary school or primary school, how they call it. But you don't have a hope like going to high school or college. Um, there's no hope because those schools you have to have money to to go to. So my main thing was. Art is a simple language where you can communicate with other people. You don't need an education. You you know it can it, you know it can speak by itself. And these were the only thing that you know I would not have a chance to go to to school and communicate with people who don't speak my native uh, language. So, but this would be a better way for me to communicate with the world around me is to be an artist. And that's how I start. So I taught myself, I never attended a training. I taught myself to be an artist, um, share my history with other people. And in 1999, uh, the beginning of 1999, it was like a dream where uh, someone came from downtown or from the United Nations compound um, to my group and saying, hey, I saw your name on the board that the United Nations uh, want to meet with you. And it was like a dream because it's, it's not easy to go to the United Nations, you know, you know compound uh, in the refugees camp. So yeah, next day I went there and they're saying, we've been seeing your artwork and we want you to help uh, to work with us and, um, and we will give you some special assignment that you can do. And that was like, wow, I didn't know that someone would even see my artwork because it's, I've been doing this somewhere uh, in my house and nobody knows what I'm doing. So it turned out like they want me to educate um, migration attorneys who go to the refugees camp and interview refugees so that they can have a chance to come to the United States. So my main job is to use my artwork are a part of education to educate them, let them see the struggling of for refugees and make the interview a little bit easy for them because coming to the US, if if you if you were born in the US, you don't see but outside it's not easy to come to the US. So these migration attorneys are trained mostly to to do anything possible to make sure that um, it's only limit, I mean, now few people have to get that chance to come to the U.S. So through the artwork that I use in the refugees can help a lot of people and make it easy for the interview um, to, to come to the U.S., especially the South Sudanese lost boy. So we end up having about 7,000 in the U.S. from 2001 to 2002. Uh, before September 11, and then when September 11 happened, that process was put on hold, and up to now. Anyway, let's make it short. That's the way of art. So when I came here, I decide I went to Solo Community College, and I decide to do computer programming. And I say, you know, I don't want to throw away this. I want to have a degree in art. So I decide to go to BYU and. You spend four years and have a degree of fine art, which helped me also to um, learn more about uh, the unique part of art, which I don't have before because I taught myself. 
So being in the class, I, I will have that opportunity to do ceramic, uh, you know, you know, sculpture, and many other medium that I can use, which I, I don't have a chance before, because I need that, yeah. So that's what I can tell you. Back home is called Lang. Yeah. Gotta get a white one for. It just depends how people look at it, and that's and I sometimes I say like a joke, but it's not. When people look at my artwork, I say it's very expensive. You will not, you know, you will not, you may not afford it to to buy my artwork because I I love to keep it. Uh, to keep my artwork because I'm, I got into the art world not to make money. It's just like to to share my history and educate people uh, using my artwork. So when I came to the U.S., I came with ten paintings from the refugees camp. Just rolled them up and put them in my bag. I don't know what I have to do with them, but I just brought them and. I kept them in my apartment at Holland apartment, uh, 1700 South and Redwood Road. That's my first apartment when I came here. And then I have a lot of challenges when I came here to navigate, uh, to get used to the system. Um, I went to Horizonte so, um, for my uh, high school diploma, mostly. And then, like two weeks after I came here, and one day I had a headache, so I decided to go home early, and I asked my roommate, because we have only one key for the apartment, I asked my roommate so I can take the key and go home, and I ended up taking the wrong bus, which take me eastbound instead of west, so I ended up like spending three hours on the bus, don't know where I'm going and told myself, I, I don't need to get off the bus because I don't know where I am and I don't know where I'm going. So the bus driver keep asking me, gentlemen, where are you going? And I say, I, I know only my apartment number. I don't know the address. I don't have any ID. I don't have anything to show exactly where I live or identity for myself. So I just keep right uh, on the bus for three hours until the bus came back to 3300 South and Redwood Road. And I remember that road because I passed, came to this Walmart on 50, 54 before. And I told the bus driver, this is where I'm going to get off. So I got up there and I walked from 3500 South to 1700 South. <laughs> and because I told myself, if I take another bus, I'm going to get lost. Just, I'm saying this because I want to uh, take you to what I'm trying to say. So I, I went there, and next day I have an appointment with Utah Art Council before. It used to be Utah Art Council, now it's changed to Division of Art and Museum. But at that time it used to be called Utah Art Council. So I have an appointment with them next day. I decide, you know, I still have that memory, like I lost yesterday on the bus, now, today, I have to walk. So I walk from 1700 South all the way to 16 East, I, I believe, 16 East and South Temple. Uh, North Temple, North, yeah, South Temple. 16 East and South, that's where the office is. I don't know how many hours it took me, but I made it, and I'm carrying 10 paintings with me <laughs> to go and meet with them. <laughs> so I, because, why I did that, I know the importance of my artwork is to educate people, um, to let people understand. It's, I got a chance to come to the U.S., but there's a lot of refugees outside who have not get any chance to come. And I know my artwork will help people to understand exactly why it's important to give them a chance to come to this country. That's why I did it, so I have to commit myself and walk and say, no, I have to do it. So I end up there at the Utah Art Council and talk to them, share my history, and then they give me a ride back to my, you know, you know, to my apartment. They say, 
how did you get here? I told them that I walk. I said, no, we're going to give you a ride back. So, and then I had my art show, my first art show in 2001. To myself, I see as a tool for building peace. Um, it's a foundation. It's not like something that can bring peace, but it's a foundation. It's like a mirror, putting mirror in front of someone so people can see themselves. And that's why I don't say my artwork because with the hope that when South Sudan became more stabilized because there's a war there, I have a hope of taking this art back to South Sudan and have a museum there, put them in the museum so people can see exactly the struggle of South Sudanese people, how many, what people went through. And now I have over 40 paintings in, in Boston. Um, and I resist, like, I don't want to sell them. I need to find a place in South Sudan to take them back and have a museum there. So we can educate the young generation. We can, people who were born during the war, people who were born in Uganda or Kenya, they, they never know the struggle of South Sudanese people. We'll have something to see uh, when they grow up, uh, something that they will remember, hey, this is what our parent went through. This is what our uncle and our relative went through. That's, that's my hope. My title for all my artwork is Art for Building Peace. So people have a different choice what to do with art, but my art is to be on peace. So this is a grazing area where we take our cow, as I mentioned. Um, back, my background, we keep cow. That's like here in the US, you have money. So back home, if you have cow, um, people consider you rich than people who have money because the value of cow than money. So cow is everything to, uh, to us. We use for dowry. Um, we don't kill cow anyhow, we just kill them either for a look, I mean, uh, like an you know, occasion, wedding occasion, or a ceremony, or any big thing. So that's, people take care of cow more than any other thing. And always they need to find a good grass. So they have to find a good grass and water. During summertime, people migrate with cow, take them like three hours, four hours, even one day walk away and make a camp over there near water so that the cow can get water and grass. So it's one very important thing mostly, yeah. And it's also connect to um, when I left the village, we were looking after cow when the, um, uh, the um, government troop from the north started shooting us. We were actually in this field and that's the time we just left and we never came back home. Uh, actually, it was my family. I, I got a job at Harvard University and I had to quit my job to move back to Utah. Because my wife went there and looked at it and said, nope, this is not a place to live. So she moved back to Utah and then I stuck there for three years. She came here in 2009. Yeah. I went back, a lot of South Sudanese went back to get marriage back home. Yeah. So, which I don't know if my kid will do that. It's only our generation. Uh, I think my kid when saying this is not, this is ridiculous culture, so I'm not, we're not going to take it. So they will do whatever they want. 